Uh, we don't need to look to New York. We need to look at Atlanta for, for um, people who are doing great things. We have people like Miss Lenore right here. So first of all, thank you for being on the show. Thank you for having me. All right. So um, for those who don't know who Miss Lenora is, please uh, give our audience a, a, a brief you know, overview of, of who Miss Lenora is. Well, uh, as Rajon said, um, I am a homegrown. I am from South Carolina, born and raised. And um, currently, uh, I've been uh, blessed to be able to tell my story. And my story currently is about um, how I live with a chronic illness. Um, as a person, I'm, I am a mom. I, I have um, the blessed with four children. I am a medically retired nurse. Um, I write poetry. I uh, done a little acting. Um, right now, I'm in part of my life where I'm pursuing my dreams. Wow. So um, that's just a little bit about me. All right, yeah. cool, cool. Any kids? I do. I have uh, twin girls that are, I mean, I can't tell their age, but they're in their 30s. <laughs> I also have a son. He's in his 30s, and my youngest daughter will be 30. Wow. Yeah, so um, I'm, I have four great adult children. Awesome, awesome, Thank awesome. You. All right, so you're from Charleston. I am. Okay, so well, give us the road pretty much. We're trying to get a little, little more background on you. So. Um, Start out in Charleston. You're born and raised in Charleston, I imagine. Yes. All right. So, do you stay in Charleston, or do you leave and go somewhere? Else? Well, I, uh, I I I went to school. My first school was at Wilberforce University, so I went to Wilberforce University. Of course, I like everyone. I lived a little in New York. My son was born there. Um, I my I'm a military child, mm -hmm. so the first five years of schooling, I was in five different schools. Wow. So <laughs> from California. To Charleston, you know, um, I went to school also in Columbia. Um, I graduated from uh, Rope Hospital Private Nursing School, mm -hmm. so um, those are my roots. Um, I um, I have traveled uh, without even traveling. Mm -hmm. My two oldest girls are Nigerian, oh, and wow. my two youngest children are Dominican. So. Um, that's amazing. <laughs> I know wow. I'm gonna leave South Carolina. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah. That's good stuff. So, um, I know you said that your book. So now we know a little bit about you in the background. What is your book like? The title of your book and what what it's about? Well, it's actually called the Mirrored Image of Me. And uh, the reason, the, and it's the Mirrored Image a physical and spiritual journey with chronic illness. And uh, the mirror, the title came about because. I have an, an autoimmune neuromuscular disease, and it's called myasthenia gravis. It's quite, it's quite rare. Um, there's maybe one in 10,000 people that are diagnosed with this illness. And uh, in writing my book, um, I'm the mirror image of me, the title, because this disease is also called an invisible, di um, an invisible disability. Mm -hmm. And um, looking at me, you couldn't diagnose what I have. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But when I look at myself in the mirror, I see a whole change in me physically. And also, I'm aware of all the scars from a tracheostomy to um, surgery where I had a tumor removed from my chest. I'm aware of all that. So I look at myself and I see only the mirror image of me but not who I really am. So wow. if you read beyond the cover, you'll see who I am beyond the mirror. Awesome, okay. awesome, awesome. And you said it's autoimmune neuromuscular. neuromuscular. Wow. Yeah. So how did that affect your body? Well, uh, as you as you well know, um, well, maybe you don't know, um, autoimmune diseases are similar like uh, lupus, mm -hmm. where they're systemic and they affect your whole body. So your system. And that's where system it comes from. And in my particular case, um, I have a neuromuscular where um, my uh, the connection between the nerves and the muscles are interrupted, mm -hmm. where I don't have the natural antibodies that make that whole connection um, go about normally. Um, and when you have an autoimmune disease, it means your body attacks itself. Right. So the attack for me is at the juncture of the nerve and the muscle. So, what happens for me is, as you as you know, that muscles are all over your body. So all the muscles of my body at one point can be affected. Wow. wow. Um, um, in the diagnose in, in the process of diagnosis, 
before um, they actually knew what I had. I had an episode where um, my eyelids, I would wake up in the morning and my eyelid would be in on me wide awake. By five o'clock in the morning, my right eye would droop. Wow. I went on with that for a while. And then it got to the point where my right eye, I had double vision. Mm -hmm. And uh, those are all really weird things. Um, I went to an eye doctor and he diagnosed me with two things. Either I had myasthenia gravis or I had a brain tumor. Wow. So I went through the process of uh, MRI to uh, find out if, those, if I had any problems with my brain or did not. But before we could go to a, uh, uh, the doctor to find out if I had my studio, I went into what they call a myasthenic crisis. Mm. That's when the muscles are breathing, they become weakened, and I don't have the I don't have the ability to inhale and exhale because my muscles are weak. Mm. So that's the, uh, the 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 most frightening thing about myasthenia is when you go into a crisis. Mm. You you know there are people who have problems with swallowing. There are people who have problems with walking because our bodies comprise the muscles. Um, so it's very uh, it's very hard to diagnose. Um, right now, it's coming up, you know it's becoming kind of prevalent. For that fact, uh, Lucius Lyon mm -hmm. on um, uh, uh -huh. Empire. He, he has myasthenia gravis, ah. but it's not really a very fair portrayal. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. He had one episode where he uh, was on a ventilator, and I myself have been on ventilator much mm -hmm. more times, mm -hmm. um, without telling the whole book. Um, yeah. But um, that's just, it's really, I just gave it to you in a nutshell. Wow. Yeah, now, and I thank you for sharing that, because I'm sure a lot of people in the audience have never, like I know, I, I had never heard of autoimmune neuromuscular <laughs> Disease. disease. See, I was trying to make sure I did it right. <laughs> so, I mean, and I'm, I'm, I'm glad that we're able to provide a little education to people. Yes. So that's the basis of it. And I'm sure you talk a whole lot more about how it affects you and how it affects yes. you on a day-to-day -day yes. basis. Yeah. What else beyond the, um, about, beyond the disease do you, do you discuss in the book? Well, I, uh, as I said, um, I, I started writing from a certain point. Mm -hmm. um, I, I kind of give you a roadmap of the scars. Yeah. Um, and I, that's how I deliver my book to you. Um, why I chose the specific point in my life to share. Uh, not more than a year and a half ago, I was on a ventilator and I had a trach. Wow. So I was not able to breathe for myself a, at all. Mm -hmm. I was a patient at MUSC, uh, which is our local hospital yeah. there. Mm -hmm. um, and I was in intensive care for quite a while because it was a process where I, my, my condition gradually deteriorated yes. to the point that I couldn't breathe at all. I was placed on the vent. Uh, they normally try to wean you off, of course. I was not able to be weaned off. Um, so then I was transferred to a, a rehab hospital where they too again tried to wean me off of it. My body was not ready. So um, the next move for me was to, to go to a nursing home facility. Wow. Um, so they gave me and my family the choice uh, that I go to a nursing home facility specifically for vet dependent patients, which was located in Atlanta, mm -hmm. or I go home. Well, I chose to go home. Mm -hmm. And um, at that point, we had to send me home on a ventilator. Uh, and there were, uh, I had, then that's when, through the grace of God, my nursing knowledge kind of mm -hmm. um, helped me. Mm -hmm. So um, during my process of uh, going through the weaning process at the rehab hospital, there were certain things they took me through, which was uh, at certain points they would take me off the full vent where I would just get assist. So I knew that that was something I needed to have at home because you know you have to build muscle. Yeah. And so at that point we had to decide on the uh, vent, mm -hmm. and you know they had their idea. Well, I worked with some vet, work, some very good respiratory therapists were there. Uh, and so I just started questioning them. Wow. And uh, I found out that um, what I needed to do from them was to find a vent and a vent company that had round the clock ability to uh, contact them mm -hmm. so I could speak to them. Mm -hmm. So that was one criteria. And a criteria I had for myself was to be able to have the ability to switch from full vent 
to uh, partial bit. Mm -hmm. So anyway, uh, what happened was we came up with an event um, that I could go home with. And at that time, my family had to, had to be trained. So my youngest daughter learned how to came in, stay the night in the nursing home, learn how to work the vent, learn how to clean my trach, mm -hmm. how to give me my medicines, kind of tube in my belly. Mm -hmm. And um, my family, uh, my dad and my other children kind of learned about it. And um, I went home on a ventilator. Uh, it was the same exact model as the model that Christopher Reeves, mm -hmm. Superman mm -hmm. had, mm -hmm. I had the exact model. Wow. So it's, it's very much state of the art. Um, my other blessing was the fact that my children were computer savvy. Mm -hmm. So that's how important that is. Right, definitely. Um, definitely so they definitely. were able to um, maneuver and use events. So I went home and um, my uh, the way uh, God set things up for me, and I continue to reference God uh -huh. because I know this, I sit before you because of him. Right, right. Um, my children's lives were available to me. So, uh, as I told you, the criteria was to have people to give me 24-hour care. Mm -hmm. So, my children were there to give me 24-hour care. I have three daughters and a son, and they uh, were there, and they nursed me. They cooked. They gave me my medications. Um, they helped me to uh, rehab. Mm -hmm. And um, my doctor and my, um, my home health nurse I eventually received they didn't expect me to get off the bed. Wow. But look at you. Look at me. And that's that's a wonderful thing. So yes. praise God for that. Amen. You know? Amen. Hey, you got it. You got to make sure you send it up because if you yes. don't, you know, you, you, he he deserves it. Well, that's, give him that. that's one of the, uh, that's another reason why this book is important yes. to me. Yes. It's an important to me to give God the, the praise mm -hmm. and all mm -hmm. the honor. Mm -hmm. And also, um, this will mark the seventh year that I've been diagnosed with myasthenia. Mm -hmm. And um, seven is the number of completion. All right. So um, I have completed the insect. All right. Um, and I also, there's a, you know, I, I believe in spirituality. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we have uh, a lot of things that um, comprise us in our spirituality. Mm -hmm. So, um, this was the opportune time and the right time. So I um, found from my notes, I wrote about the mirror image of me in my phone. Wow. And it became the topic of my book. And it began to, it helped me to flow. Praise God. Yeah, and that Praise was God. my flow. Praise God. Yeah. That is awesome. And that's amazing. Like, I just, I just love so much hearing your story. And I'm sure that everybody who buys a copy of the mirrored image of me will get that same feel, that same love from it. Um, so I would, I would, I would want to sort of close on this question. Who is this book written for? I know you wrote it for your own healing and your own purposes, but when somebody is out looking for a book and they say, I want to get the mirrored image of me, what type of person did you write this book, book with it in mind? I, I wrote the book for people who wonder and who are not sure of the healing power and the glory of God. Wow. Because we're in a time now where, you know, it's very difficult. There's a lot of, uh, and I guess, evil, um, you know, non-spiritual activity. And, uh, you know, God and believing in God can sometimes become old fashioned mm -hmm. in a time where we're so computerized. Mm -hmm. But it's a, it's a basic love story to me, um, to God, mm -hmm. and to give him the honor and the glory. Also to uh, let people know that God still heals. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. there's still healing power. Mm -hmm. And and everything uh, is all about faith. Um, you know, that's all I had. Mm -hmm. um, when, you know, I'm laying in a hospital and not being able to breathe on my own. I couldn't do anything for myself. I was I was actually computer operated, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and um, all I I looked in the ceiling and and I, all I could do was look up because mm -hmm. I was flat on my back. Yeah, yeah. And um, just uh, it's just that simple basic story, and um, I just told it my way, and also to let people know that we all go through things, and it's a point of 
staying in that spot mm -hmm. or actually going through it. Mm -hmm. Because you've got to believe that there's light and love on the other side and that God will bring you through. So that's what I want mm -hmm. to share and um, which was very important to me mm -hmm. because, you know, I'm very grateful. Yes. Yes. Basically. Yes. yes. All right. So that's Miss Lenora Adelabu Cash. I saw Cash on the last yes. one there. Yes. So make sure you go look, go find on the Amazon. mirror image on Amazon. It's on Amazon and it's on Kindle. Okay. So you get, um, I mean, there uh, for these tech savvy people, you mm -hmm. can read it on your phone, your your tablets. It's on on Amazon and on Kindle. All right. Yes. So and, go on there and read it. I know. I I'm, I I didn't want to. I just wanted to let them know that it is reasonably priced. For a reason, it too is seven dollars. Mm. Seven. Yes, there we uh -huh. go. There we go. Um, that's just that's my thing. So um, I would like to thank Rashawn for having me and to uh, be able to share my story and to um, give honor. Awesome, awesome. Yes. So let's make sure we go out and get the mirror image of me by Miss Lenora A. Cash. All right, it's very important that we support our local our local celebrities, yeah. our local authors, mm -hmm. our local artists, and our local entrepreneurs. And when they're out there trying to tell their story and trying to uplift you and uplift the people around them, we need to make sure we give them that support so they can feel it from us. In real talk, Rajan definitely does support what you're doing. So thank you so much for coming on the show. Yeah. Thank you so I'm much. Honored. Yes, <laughs> So that's going to conclude today's show. Um, of course, on Sunday night, I will be doing my New Year's Eve special. I'll actually be doing my um, top things of the year. From the year um, as, as, as they happen. But please make sure you tune in and make sure you do not be the person left out because you didn't tune in. Because at the end of the day, if a man doesn't stand for something, he'll fall for anything. But that's real talk. Peace.